Hello students, welcome to the lecture of pharmaceutical jurisprudence. In this lecture, we are going to study about pharmaceutical legislation in India. So before we begin with pharmaceutical legislation, let me make you aware with background of pharmaceutical legislation. During pre-independent period, especially from 1920s to 1930s, there were several reports of harmful substitutes and adulterants being marketed in India instead of genuine drugs. Several deaths were reported due to this adulterant and spurious drug. There was need for effective acts and rules related to drugs and pharmaceuticals in the country in order to make proper control and stringent regulation in marketplace this pharmaceutical legislation was introduced so pharmaceutical legislation can be defined as laws related to pharmacist pharmacy professions drugs medicines cosmetic practices and substances affecting health of human beings and animals. Purpose of pharmaceutical legislation is to ensure that patient receives drug of required quality, tested and effective for safety, efficacy for their intended use. It is associated with the health of society. Then the objective of pharmaceutical legislation were first one to promote health care by regulating the manufacture, supply and distribution of good quality drugs. Then to make these drugs available to the public at reasonable price and through qualified person. Also to safeguard people from misleading and false advertisement related to drugs and remedies. To regulate the profession of pharmacy and to promote the indigenous research technology. Then the scope of pharmaceutical legislation is it is related with legal system which regulates the conduct of pharmacy business and practices of profession of pharmacy. A thorough understanding of all laws pertaining to pharmacy is essential and all legal aspect must be satisfied by those who wish to practice the pharmacy business. It helps the pharmacist to understand their legal and ethical responsibilities and by avoid the danger of unnecessary legal proceedings. The patient should get the drug of good quality which are tested and evaluated for efficacy as well as safety. Now let's talk about origin or history of pharmaceutical legislation. For the first time in India, a chemist shop was opened in about 1811 by Mr. Bhargate who came to India with East India Company in Calcutta. After 100 year, that is in 1910, this firm started manufacture of tinctures and spirits. Another firm, Smith Stenistain, sorry, Stenistain Street and Company started Apocary that is the solution of medicinal substance in alcohol shop in 1821 and commenced the manufacturing in 1918. Then the Bengal chemist and pharmaceutical work a small factory was started in Calcutta in 1901 by Acharya P. C. Rai that is Acharya Prafulla Chandra Rai. Then, in 1903, under leadership of Professor T. K. Gujar, a small factory at Parel was started, which led to development of other pharmaceutical units, that is, Alembic Chemical Work Limited at Baroda. Then, the unit was not sufficient to fulfill the requirement of Indian public. In those days, most of the medicine were brought or imported from abroad, mainly from UK, France and Germany. Then, the situation was changed after First World War. Cheaper drugs were imported from abroad. There were also increasing demands for indigenous drugs. The Indian and foreign concern entered in competition with imported medicine producing cheaper drugs. As a result, unhealthy competition grew up and the Indian market got flooded with inferior 
substandard and even harmful drugs with this issue the public made the government to take notice of such situation of drug trade and industry and to think of introducing effective legislation to control the import manufacturing distribution and sale of drug in those days opium act 1878 poison act 1919 and dangerous drug act 1930 were in existence but this act were not sufficient to control the existing un uh, desirable condition thus as such there was no legal control on pharmacy profession at the beginning of this century with rapid expansion in pharmaceutical industries and market more competitive legislation was required hence to have a comprehensive legislation the indian government appointed a drug enquiry committee under chairmanship of lieutenant colonel r n chopra in 1931 also known as dec committee or chopra committee then the committee was asked to make enquiries in the said matter and then to make recommendations for smooth control of manufacture import distribution and sale of drug in the interest of public health so let's talk about need of drug enquiry committee or dec or chopra committee in the dealing of drug and medicines profit rather than service became the main motive resulting into spurious substandard and adulterated drug became more common as compared to that of standard and genuine one outside india drugs were manufactured specially for india which were of inferior quality india became platform for quack medicines and adulterated drug manufactured in all part of the world it means that those medicines which were rejected or which were not as per the standards of those respective country india became the dumping ground all those medicines were sent and were sold in india there were many occurrences of offenses related to drug there was no authority to control such activities the indian government formed drug enquiry committee in 1930 sorry it is 1931 and to study the problems related to drugs in india then the drug enquiry committee that is it submitted its comprehensive report with about 90 recommendations and some of the main recommendations which were mentioned in drug uh, recommendations of drug enquiry committee were first one formation of central pharmacy council and provincial or also known as state pharmacy council which would look after education and training of professionals this council were maintain the register containing the names and address of registered pharmacist then creation of drug control machinery department at the center with branches in all the state establishment of well equipped central drug laboratory that is cdl with competent staff and expert for an efficient and speedy work of dc department that is drug control department it was also suggested that small laboratories would work under the guidance of central drug laboratory also known as cdl then it also recommended setting of test laboratories in all states to control the quality of production of drugs and pharmaceuticals appointment of advisory board to advise government in making rules then the drug industry in india should be developed also setting of course for training in pharmacy and prescribing minimum qualification for registration of pharmacist so this were the recommendations of drug enquiry committee however due to second world war in 1939 there was delay in introduction of legislation as per the recommendations of drug enquiry committee which was considered as an urgent by indian government finding the government reluctant to implement or unwillingness 
to implement the recommendations of drug inquiry committee the demand and pressure from public was increased to implement the said recommendations ultimately an import of drugs bill was introduced in 1937 in legislative assembly to control import of drugs the government preferred to bill oh, sorry to refer the bill to sele uh, select committee the bill was limited only for import of drug and not for the manufacture and sale of drug which were harmful for the health that is the matter of selling and manufacturing was untouched only import was regulated hence the select committee passed from legislative uh, sorry from comprehensive legislation not only to control import but also to control regulate manufacture sale and distribution of drug into the country then once the further once the drug bill was introduced in 1940 in legislative assembly after considering the report of select committee drug bill 1940 was passed it came in force as drug bill 1940 after 7 years that is in 1947 since then the drug act has been amended many times and at present the act covers the provisions related to drug cosmetics ayurvedic including unani and homeopathic medicines the present drug and cosmetic act is an improved version of drug act 1940 the main objective of this act is to regulate the import manufacture distribution and sale of drug and cosmetic the central government has made a number of rules for manufacturing distribution and sale of drug and cosmetic in india entitled the drug and cosmetic rules 1945 this act and rule were amended from time to time amended that is they were improved they were updated okay then with the achievement of india's independence in 1947 the rest of the required enactments were also passed following the recommendations of dc the pharmacy act 1948 was passed with the objective to regulate the profession of pharmacy in india then In 1954 the drug and magic remedies that is objectionable advertisement act was passed with the main aim to control certain types of advertisement related to drugs and to prohibit certain kinds of advertisement related to magic remedies the toilet sorry the medicinal and toilet preparation that is excise duty act 1955 was passed to provide collection of duties of excise on medicinal and toilet preparation containing alcohol opium indian hemp and other narcotic drugs and narcotics the central government has framed certain rules under provision of this act called as the medicinal and toilet preparation excise duty rules 1956 under the essential commodity act 1955 and in supersession of drug price control order 1979 the central government made dpco that is drug price control order act 1987 then in 1985 the narcotic drug and psychotropic substance act was passed along with the rules replacing the dangerous drug act 1930 and opium act 1878 the main objective of this act is to consolidate and amend the laws related to narcotic drug and to make stringent provisions for control and legislation sorry regulate the operations related to narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance and for the matter connected therewith the prevalence of elect traffic in narcotic drug and psychotropic substance ordinance 1988 is supplement to this act there were also some other enactments which are directly or indirectly related to manufacturing distribution and sale of drug and pharmaceuticals in india they are first one that is prevention of food adulteration act 1954 and rules 
then the industry development and regulation act 1951 the industrial employment that is standing order act 1946 and rules industrial dispute act 1947 factory act 1948 then the indian patent and design act 1970 the trade and merchandise mark act 1958 then the epidemic disease act 19 sorry 1879 sorry it is not 1879 it is 1897 and shop and establishments act of respective states so we'll be studying all these different acts in this subject in our coming lectures thank you